The reason being that from your first year, you've been taking internship with KPMG. They are the top, top dog as far as uh, employment is concerned. Okay? And you'll be working with them whilst you're on holiday. So by the time you finish everything, you have a job, you have a degree, you have a chartered accountancy degree on the same time, profession at the same time, which is much, much easier. But what I can tell you is to enter is very, very difficult. That is not impossible. I spoke with somebody who eventually is not in the course. And your, your dream is already set if you want it. So you can see me, I will leave some of the materials around here, materials in which you can qualify. You can see me in the to you. Can I just talk to you a little bit? <laughs> to me, it's interesting. Can I just talk to you a little bit? Because I'm going to worry as well. A little bit about my career, and then we move on. What really excites me is for you to talk in terms of evidence. If you speak, there are no evidence. I struggle with that. Okay, so if you talk and tell me you can do it this way, I'm not, I'm not particularly interested in that. I want to tell me, based on this, I am, I'm somebody who likes evidence, okay? Not so much into finance, but more into numerical, and I like analytical. If you tell me I'm going to London, then you leave me a lot of problem. You are going to think, how are you going to go to London? That sort of thing. If you say, I went to, I'm leaving Coventry to London, which I'm not supposed to take about 45 minutes, is that right? And you get to London in two hours, then you'll be thinking, what are the routes the guy took? So I have that kind of analytical mind in my own way, but I didn't know where I need to go. Okay, so what I probably wanted to do was that, even though I was analytical, but I was speaking math from the start. Because maybe if you came from where I come from, Ghana, if you're happy to get a math teacher who will teach you very well, then you like the discipline. But when somebody tells you this is the formula limit, then you, think, you realize that you don't know where you're going. Because you meet the same thing and it's not the same thing you're taught in class and you're shouting, you don't know what to do. So I never liked mathematics at all. But then, my interest was to be a pilot, seriously. Because uh, and I've still not left it out, actually, because I'm still looking to pursue a private degree in piloting. But at the end of the day, I spoke with them. I went to uni. So I didn't do business at all, and I went to uni. And this is where it's important, guys. I spoke to a mentor. My mentor at that time was the leader of Focus on Men. And he was the vice chancellor of the university. So I had a chat with him, and he said, based on all the things I discussed with him, he says, your area could be finance. And I said, I don't have a, I have a problem with math. And he said, hey, you need math, you need economics, otherwise you can't do finance. It was a forward-looking subject. So what do I do? Now I realized that by and large, after I prayed and I've listened to advice, I realized that was interesting to me. But I was speaking math. I was speaking statistics. What do I do? You may be sitting here, guys, you may find yourself the same way. But I have to put in a determination. I have to put in serious determination for. So I have to go, I have to repeat the university for one year. But because I was determined to do it, okay, I didn't care. So my mates were ahead of me one year, but I wanted, I know what I wanted to achieve. Because eventually, I felt so happy with what I wanted to do. Guess what? During summer break, what we call it, summer break, I didn't go home. Because I was speaking math and statistics, and these are the components I need. I spent all my three months on campus where I'm going home. And I have to read books from cover to cover to catch up. That's a determination, because I wanted to do it. So we are Christians. Well, the efficiency is that you bless them with all spiritual blessings. But you also have to work hard. You've got to be determined. It's not enough to sit here and say that, oh, I've heard a lot, I can do this. It doesn't come that way. Our, our colleagues were talking to you, they put in a lot. The number of times I try to talk to Alma, I don't get her. Her phone will be off because she's doing a PhD. But I understand, why I'll do a PhD? Yeah, I, I didn't have a lot of friends. But it's, it's a period, it's a stage. Okay? So I went into that. Eventually, I started with the accountancy course, ACC. Those who have done ACC, I did ACC part two, I read that. Right. That was not my calling. <laughs> That's not my calling. I could do the thing, I could pass all right. I mean, to have ACC part two, I think it's not bad at that time. But I realized that's not my calling. But I was still prepared to look for my God given ability. I was not ready to settle for any inefficient, some optimal level. I didn't like that. Because eventually, it's going to be my career. I'm going to enjoy that. So, what do I do? I did my degree eventually in economics. And somebody who never liked it eventually came up with a very good degree. Interesting that I went ahead to do my two masters in two different models in economics. And it's quite interesting. See, at the end of the day, I pray to God, I sought for counsel, and God helped me. If you're a child of God, I want to tell you that 
you will have every tool under your disposal to succeed. Amen. God has blessed us so much that flash, we don't take we don't take use of some of this and we think, oh well, academic is different from God. It's not true. I want to tell you this somewhere I spoke somewhere, I told the people, there's a ministry in academics. You see, when God brought and brings you to a certain level, He has a ministry for you. You can't be a pastor. But I can talk to people about God through my profession. Right. And that is something you have to explore. Amen. 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 Eventually, after getting all these things, I came to university. And before that, when I was in Ghana, I had a prophecy. I think I was going with that before and I heard that before. I had a prophecy. And the prophecy, that's why I said it's very important you have to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Heather has spoken that, my colleagues have spoken about it. And the prophecy 10 years back, the Lord showed me a vision that I didn't understand at that time. If you have read Daniel, you understand some of this language. Close it for that point in time. Okay? And the Lord had showed me that I was in Ghana by then, I didn't even have a passport by then. And the Lord had shown me that I was going to be in a very big room. And I'll be giving the talk to almost everybody in the room who are white. I thought that was really nonsensical. <laughs> You're talking about me not having a passport. I didn't even know where to go to be able to get through. Okay? So eventually, I just prayed about it. Then what happened? I proceeded to the University of Nottingham, which a lot have been said. I will be going to that. And I'm in my PhD. In the middle of, before I even graduated, I made an application for a job, the first job I did in my life. And it was to the University of Durham. But when I was going, many people said to me, come on, think again. You're going to a top five university. And I think, and now you did whip up the interest in me more. I didn't see that. But I keep encouraging. Because, well, I didn't know whether it was top five, whether I would get it or not, but I want to try. So eventually I put in my application, we went through. It was 137 people applied for two positions. So obviously you can't yourself out. Uh, even though I had God, but I was, I was putting the things a little bit. For a reason also being that I had not graduated yet. I still don't have my degree yet. So we come in, I was in the same interview with people who have already had PhD over years. So when we went for the interview, I could remember I was sitting there, the Lord could speak to me, I brought you here. I brought you here. But at that time, I forgot some 10 years back. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Church, to stay under the feet of God is important. Yeah. It's very important. Eventually, what happened? Two weeks afterwards, I was home and they said to me, we had just appointed only one person. Wow. Out of the 137. Yeah. And I was the only person that was appointed. Wow. Amen. See, it's just to show you that what God to Abraham, I'll bless you and make you a blessing. That's why when that told me that we have Friends like this, I thought that would be a blessing unto you. Yeah. Because it's very, very important for you to hear that. Yeah. And I'll tell you the hallmark of my success, maybe you can learn in addition to what my friends have shared. Three things I always consider your faithfulness and commitment to God's work. Bible says in the reward of did that diligently see you. He will reward you, my friends. You might not come through academic directly, but there is a reward waiting for you. Amen. And please do some time to invest in people. It's very important. It's not about you all. It's about people. Invest in people. We end up putting it in in another way. He may increase. I mean, he may decrease. The others will increase. Try to be hard working. There are nights I don't sleep. Three, four nights I've never slept. I had God. I could have just kept quiet. But they have to work in hard. I have to, I have to work hard to be able to achieve it. Work extremely hard. You'll be there. Last I want to tell you, determination and networking is important. You, may, you need to know somebody to connect you. It's very important. What you call in the world, whom you know. I call it nicely networking. I call it networking. Finally, I have this advice for you. These chapters of scriptures have helped me. I could tell one for you. They don't diligently seek him. When I was coming, the Lord laid something in my heart I want to share with you. I've never heard it before. I've read this scripture, but the Lord laid something to me on my Australia. He said that there's something called sin of underdevelopment. And I was shocked. Sin of underdevelopment. You are here and you think that Edna was saying something. You go in as a cleaner 
and you finish as a cleaner, you die as a cleaner, you have a case to answer with God. Okay, God said to me, in Matthew, you remember the story in the parable of the, of, of the, of the talent? The guy who didn't invest eventually was punished. There's a sin involved. I wish that God will leave the same thing on your heart. Thank you very much.